Speaking of having fun, you probably know this joke. How many psychologists does it take to change a light bulb? 32. 32? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? I don't know. Well, there's two answers. One to hold the light bulb and 99 to turn the house. Or <laughs> only one, but the light bulb has to want to change. And there is the punchline. There's there the, you there's go. the punchline. There's the there's the there's the pun. Yeah, we say that a lot. I mean, you know, it's it's um there was a sign that we took a picture and put up on our Instagram. We got off the plane and there's this big mural and Kimberly got in front of it and it says, More smiles equal more smiles. Mm -hmm. And and the am the amount of problems and issues and stuck and struggle and call it what you will, victim mentality, imposter syndrome, fear of being seen. So much of that can be resolved with more smiles, better breathing, and better words. And this is yeah. this is a bold claim, mm -hmm. and it's also self-evident for me. Yeah. Where mindset is going, everybody, it's going to the words. Mm -hmm. The conversation about mindset is going to the words. What words to use less of and why? What words to use more of and why? Mm -hmm. And it puts that it puts the game back in the um, in 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 the person's hands or their client's hands. Because guess what? I didn't need a PhD to create the story of me being a scaredy cat, right. which I did in elementary school when some fights broke out on the playground and I ran the other way. I didn't need a PhD to create that story when I was that young. Mm -hmm. And I didn't need a PhD to pick up a pen when I was 33 years old and get that story out of my head right. and change some of those words. Yeah. So the amount that we can of things that we can change on our own. And you know, there's a time and a place for, you know, clinical everything. And, and I mean, yeah. And it, it's, and also it's quite nice to, have you ever Googled the definition of mindset, Paul? Not mindset, just mind. Yeah. So there's 17 definitions, 17 definitions, different definitions of mindset mm -hmm. on the first page alone when you yeah. Google it. And some of them are, okay, yeah, I, I can get my head around that. Um, and then some of them are just very long and weird and complicated. And it was like somebody said, hey, you over there in the corner, come up with some complicated mm -hmm. definition of mindset so no one can understand it. And then who cares? We'll just put it out. Yeah. And Lifted has a definition of mindset. Yeah. It's the story that we tell ourselves. Yes. Well, that's the thing I was going to bring up. Cause yeah. <clears throat> changing the words won't stick unless you go right to the story because it's, the words are always just an expression of the story. And so are the images in people's heads. And that's why in my system, myth is so important because your inner myth or what ultimately turns out to be your secret story is what's really driving your victim, saboteur, prostitute, negative derivations of the child archetype, eternal child, wounded child, orphan child, all of those. So a lot of the work I have to do with people is really looking at your story and realizing that you have the power to change the story, just like any author does, and even change our past, because, you know, a lot of the wounds that have the most formative force on the words that we choose and the abracadabra we use is really the story from our most traumatic events. But when you go back to them and witness them and take an adult perspective and say, what is my dream for myself now and how can I use that dream to have a, a more sublimated view, a bird's eye view of the story I've been telling myself. And if you can identify where the story that you've been telling yourself is antagonistic to what you create, want to create now, then you can reframe it from a perspective of being more grounded in who you choose to be instead of who you've been programming yourself or p programmed by others to be yeah i think that's really a key part of change is getting right to the to the story yeah and that's the core of what our coaching methodology does is most people have a story that's so big and so infinite and they're not sure where it originated or they don't know how it formed and it's it is uh so loud yet just amorphous in their head. Like there's not really, you know, there's no beginning and an end. Mm -hmm. And it's this thing that's consistently haunting you throughout mm -hmm. your life. And whether you're aware of it or not, it's running the program. Mm -hmm. And so what we take a look at is really, and this is like a great, you know, into our review of the, 
the things we talked about last time is the first thing we have to do is write that story down Mm -hmm. and create, get it externalized from Mm -hmm. running infinitely in our head to on a piece of paper written down beginning, middle, end, and then teaching coaches how to write. So at its core, before I get into that is at its core, most coaches do not have a tool to address this or system to address this. They have, they have an understanding that they need to, they understand that, uh, that this is what's happening, but ultimately it's a difficult thing to shift someone else's story or to, to help somebody shift their story. Mm -hmm. And so the core of our method is, is doing exactly that. And so once we can get the things down on paper and we can objectively look at the words, we talk about language as influencing four main aspects of ourselves, which is our feelings and emotions. So that story is going to elicit an emotional response. Mm -hmm. I'm going to feel things in my body, the pictures in my head. You mentioned that the imagination, what I see when I look at, uh, when I, when I'm telling that story, the, the movie I see playing in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we get into posture, the mm-hmm. physiology, how the, how that story may be shifting, how you're expressing through the physical body and then the breathing, right? Which is if you're upregulated, you're going to have a stress breathing response. Your, your rate of speech may pick up. And when we look at those things, the language is influencing all of that. And all of those things are also influencing the language. Mm-hmm. And so most of the time we can identify one of those four things is happening without being able to tie it back to the words. And so the system is, is taking all that, looking back at the words, looking back at how the way, the specific way that I'm constructing these sentences, how that is influencing my response to the story. Um, Ultimately, most people's language is forcing them into a victim mentality Mm -hmm. to be a spectator in their story rather than being the main character in their story to be the one who can actually author that new story. Mm -hmm. And they're the way that they're talking about themselves, the way they're viewing themselves, the way they're feeling about themselves, the way their posture is closing off, the way they're breathing is inflaming that whole experience. Mm -hmm. And so looking at being able to go to the tangible written down story, be objective about the words on the paper and with, with a clear outline. And this is all the things we talked about in, in the first episode was about conflict language versus architect language Mm -hmm. and how certain um, example, right. Penny was saying before we started, she's like, Oh, I always forget to take a picture. I, I always forget to take a picture. What happened? She forgot to take a picture. (laughs) Exactly. And then when she came back, she said, I'm going to remember at the end to take a picture. And I said, ding, ding, ding. There you go, Penny. Yeah. Right. And so it's that, the way, if I say I'm going to forget to take the picture, I'm most likely that I'm going to forget it. The definition of a spell, everyone. (laughs) Since we're in review mode, (laughs) Webster's, Webster's not mine. The definition of a spell is a word or a combination of words of great influence. Yeah. And I always, I always forget to take a picture or everybody's got it so much easier than me or nobody will ever really love me or um, why even try. Those are combinations of words. Mm -hmm. Somebody believes them. They're going to greatly influence those four things that Kimberly said. Pictures, how someone's breathing, their their body language, their feelings and emotions. And, um, uh, uh, you know, I'll keep Kimberly out of this. Um, (laughs) I would imagine that I'm one of the most... um, simple guess that you're going to have on here <laughs> by, by maybe do, well yeah it's it's um by by nature and nurture and that's one of the things that we definitely bring to the table with this particular conversation which is the only conversation we have how words influence us for better and for worse and what we've done a good job of is make it easy for people to understand yeah that's the hardest thing to do um you know because these types of topics can go very, it it very goes deep. into outer space land so fast. Yeah. And w- what I've noticed in my own life, you know, my father passed last month, mm. um, is that when life throws curveballs, which it will, the worst thing to do is to propagate a complicated story. Mm. The best thing to do is to simplify the story, which yeah. is a thousand trillion times easier that's a real number i googled it once the story is written down so we're we're we are very basic we're very simple and we're all about the basics and a lot of times when the basics are done well a lot of the a lot of the other stuff is you know you know the icing and the cherry on the cake so i don't want to complicate your story because you like it simple but you got to be careful about believing what you read on google <laughs> you know 
<laughs> yeah, I'll take my chances. They did have they 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 have seventeen definitions of mindset. Yeah. I'll I'll put ours. I'll get up there. Ours up there someday. Yeah. <laughs> um, most people don't know what a mind is. And set is environment, so mind, an embodied and relational process that regulates the flow of energy and information. That's very important distinction. Embodied and relational process, it's unfolding constantly, that regulates the flow of energy, which is what emotions are. Emotions are energy moving, and information, the whole universe is made out of energy and information. So your mindset is really the basis from which you create your own inner universe. And to the degree you don't like it, you'll tell everybody, and to the degree that you do, we'll all know that too. <laughs> that is 1,000% true. Yeah. And not only tell it, people will feel it. Yeah. You know? yeah. That whole negative energy energy vampire thing, mm -hmm. that's, a real, that's a real thing. We're obvious. It's Come on, everybody. Not, not that I need to say it like that to your audience, but we're... We're majorly energy beings, energetic yeah. beings. First and foremost, most likely. I don't. I'm, a lot of that stuff's over my head, but you know, it's. I, I definitely feel it when I'm around people of, um, you know, like like staticky mm -hmm. energy mm -hmm. and just like spiky and just you know. They're, they're, how about this? Their breath is trapped in their chest. Most mm -hmm. people's breath is trapped in their chest. Mm -hmm. And uh, from my personal and professional opinion, since we're still in review mode. That's due to a, a raging victim-centric story that's in their mm -hmm. head. The words haven't been written down. Really hard. It's tough action to help change someone's story when the words are in their head. So much easier when the words are written down. And um, yeah, and, and you know, break break those those old spells, everybody, and you'll unlock your breath. <laughs> We're known as the language people. That's cool, and might as well be known as the language and the breathing people because that's the thing that that's what. It's really about is to unlock people's breathing, and then they're going to go live their better lives on their own and naturally. I don't have to have I don't have to be a smarty pants coach and know what they need to think and do and you know what we're, how what it's it's just it's it's very talk about freeing. So the title of this podcast mm -hmm. that is exceedingly freeing for a coach when they get themselves out of I'm a one eight hundred I got all the right answers hotline coach mm -hmm. and into good questions good breathing help your clients get the stories written down get them to look at their words mm -hmm. change some words what happens there it's the difference between me telling them and them telling them it's a profound difference 